Now, now back to the title, uh, you could say these two words, receiving and enjoying. Receiving and enjoying. Now, I want us to look at the, uh, the last verses from the New Testament on our sheet. Starting with John 1.12. How about we have, let's see, why don't we alternate on these verses, all right? All the guys can read John 1.12, all the, all the girls, the gals. John 1.16. And let's, let's alternate through, all right? And as you read these verses, just there's a key word that's common in all of these all of these verses. It should be like extremely apparent what the word is. <laughs> Alright, so all right, we said all the guys on one twelve, right? We can just read it out loud. But as many as received him. Alright. John one sixteen. For of his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. John seven thirty nine A. But this he said concerning the Spirit. Whom those who believed into him were about to receive. And when he had said this, he breathed into them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. That's right. Let us therefore come forward with boldness to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace for timely help. So what's the common word there? Receive. It's receive, right? The New Testament definitely emphasizes our need as believers to receive. We need to receive. What do you do when you receive? You don't do anything. You just, you, do, you don't work for it. You just, you just take, just take. That's, that's grace. That's another word for grace in the New Testament. We don't, we don't work. We didn't, what did Isaac do to inherit all that Abraham had, he didn't do anything. He just was born, he grew up, and just took it. <laughs> That's all we have to do. It's very simple. Being a believer is actually, in one sense, is very simple. From the vantage point of Isaac, all we need to do is continually receive. Continually receive. What do we receive? We receive the Spirit, grace upon grace, receive Him, receive the abundance of grace, receive the gift of righteousness, receive mercy, these are all the things that we continually receive. And when do we need to, when do we finally graduate from receiving? Never. We never do. Um, our entire Christian life, we continue to receive more and more of the Lord. More and more of all the riches of who He is. Alright, so I'm just going to wrap it up. I think, uh, I know Ben last week wrapped it up with kind of four, is it four or five points? Four, yeah. And uh, I also want to kind of wrap it up with just some, okay, what does it mean to receive and how can we receive? Talking about receiving all of these, the riches of the Lord, being a receiver like Isaac did. Uh, how, can we, how can we do this? All right, the first thing, I'll just write some verses on the board. This is a famous verse. Isaiah 40, 31. A lot of times you see this on Christian frames. Alright, so this is what it says. Yet those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not faint. They will walk and will not become weary. Right. The, the phrase that I want to focus on is the first one. Those who wait, wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So how can we receive the riches of the Lord, how can we take in the riches of the Lord? It's by waiting, by waiting on the Lord. Wait means spend some time. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop. What, we need to stop what we're doing and just take some time to receive the Lord. Through His Word, through prayer, uh, whatever it is, we need to stop, wait. Wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord, what happens? They will renew their strength. Feel like your strength is running out? In the Christian life, what do we need to do? We need to wait on the Lord. All right? yeah. So that's the first point. The second point is Matthew 5, 3. Verse also, I think many of us are familiar with this verse. All right. So it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. And I want to focus on this little phrase, poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. What does that mean? All right? You could, this, this is a, a definition. You could say it means humbled, emptied in the depth of our being. Um, okay. Not holding on to old things, but unloaded to receive new things. Not holding on to old things, but unloaded to receive new things. So, you know, last last Sunday we had a wonderful uh, sharing. And maybe for us that was just like the Lord really appeared to us. And that's wonderful. But uh, we need to go on. <laughs> we need to always be freshly open, freshly emptied and unloaded, even of positive, even of very positive things. And press on to enjoy more of the Lord. Not be satisfied with what we've already experienced. But uh, poor in spirit. Unloaded to receive. Alright. That's another thing. Then. Very simple point. Luke 11. Nine through 13. If you have a New Testament you can flip to it. Basically, famous verses again. Luke eleven ten says, Everyone who asks, receives. What do we need to do to receive according to the New Testament? Ask. That's it. It's very simple. All right. What do we ask for? A few verses later, it says, How much more will the Father who is from heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? All right. So this asking is not, again, it's not asking for a new car new house, uh, but it's asking, what these verses are talking about is asking for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Father, give me the Holy Spirit, right? There's a promise. If you ask, you will receive, right? Very clear. Okay. So hopefully during the day, we ask the Lord many times, Lord, fill me with yourself. Fill me with the Spirit. Give me more of yourself, all right? And the Lord promises if we ask that we will receive. The last one, Romans 8, 2. And this verse just says, uh, The law of the Spirit of life has freed me in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and of death. So, uh, the point here is that uh, what frees us from sin and death is not, uh, it's not effort, it's not hard work. Um, it's the law of the spirit of life, like the law of gravity operates. If I have a book and I drop, I let go, the law of gravity dictates that the book will fall. And it's the same way. If we, uh, if we enjoy the Lord, if we touch the spirit, if we touch life, there's a law, a principle that operates automatically and guarantees that we will be free from the law of sin and death. So it's not, but it's, it's not by our direct you know, war or effort against the law of sin and death, but it's by enjoying the law of the spirit of life. So these these three things, again, it's just, that's, that's an element of receiving. What do we do? We just contact the Lord. The Lord takes care of the rest. So wait on the Lord, spend time, be empty, forget about what happened yesterday, just enjoy the Lord today. Ask, ask to receive, and then, and then just contact the Lord and enjoy the spontaneous outworking of whatever he does within us, Amen. right? But uh, so an ordinary person receiving and enjoying—that's uh, that's the story of Isaac, and that should be the story of us too. Amen. Amen.